This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado, and I'll be speaking about reticular bullous epithelial edema in corneas treated with rho kinase inhibitors. This is a relatively recent phenomenon that has been noted by several ophthalmologists, and my intention today is to cover the basics, including patient presentation and pearls for practice to resolve the condition. By way of background, Natarsidil or Ropressa is a rho kinase inhibitor that is on the market for intraocular pressure lowering. It regulates the shape and movement of cells by acting on the cytoskeleton. Specifically, natarsidil lowers intraocular pressure by relaxing the trabecular meshwork, which increases outflow. It also lowers episcleral venous pressure and reduces fluid production. From an IOP lowering efficacy standpoint, you see here that once daily natarsidil was non-inferior to twice daily timolol at all nine time points through month three, Essentially, from an IOP lowering standpoint, there's little difference between timolol twice a day and natarsidil once a day. There is, however, a significant difference in adverse event profile between natarsidil and timolol. Natarsidil has a tendency to cause conjunctival hyperemia at a much higher rate than timolol, and it also causes cornea verticillata, which I'll cover in a little bit more detail with a photo coming up. Rho kinase inhibitors installed topically also cause limbal petechia, small hemorrhages at the limbal margin that tend to go away after a few weeks and tend not to recur. The cornea verticillata noted with Ropressa or Natarsidil is different than what we have been accustomed to with other medications that cause verticillata. In this case, you see a patient with pigment dispersion glaucoma and a Kruckenberg spindle where the black arrow is pointing and the verticillata where the green arrow is pointing. You can see here that the verticillata is pigmented and also has a different pattern than with systemic medications, for example. Rho kinase inhibitors have been noted to enhance corneal endothelial wound healing and reduce corneal edema. We also know that desmetorexis combined with treatment using a ROC inhibitor has been shown to improve corneal edema and visual acuity in some patients with corneal endothelial dysfunction. Desmetorexis without endothelial keratoplasty is currently under investigation with natarsidil. Several cases of bullous epithelial edema in patients with pre-existing corneal disease who were treated with natarsidil have been reported in the literature, and the pathology is primarily noted in the inferior cornea. This is a case that was shared with me from Sam Garg, who's at the University of California, Irvine. You can see here on the left-hand side, this is while the patient was on Ropressa with the bullous epithelial keratopathy, and then a few weeks post-discontinuation on the right-hand side where the bullous epithelial keratopathy is much improved. This is a second case that was shared with me from Mike Koval that shows similar bullous epithelial keratopathy on a patient who had prior history of corneal trauma with dysfunctional endothelial cells. You can see here the picture is quite similar with the multiple bullae in the epithelial layer and diffuse edema. There have been several case series and case reports on this phenomenon. This is one specifically from Wisely and colleagues, which was a retrospective case series describing patient characteristics and clinical course of an unusual reticular pattern, as they called it, with bullous epithelial corneal edema after use of natarsidil. They identified this in five eyes of five patients that were treated with the medication. Four of five patients had a history of corneal edema in the affected eye, and the fifth patient had risk factors for corneal edema, including anterior uveitis and a glaucoma drainage device. The majority of eyes had documented corneal edema localized to the deeper stromal layers prior to starting natarsidil with edema, and this shifted to the epithelial layer in a reticular pattern, most prominently in the inferior cornea post-installation of natarsidil. The edema improved or resolved in all cases a few weeks post-discontinuation of natarsidil. Another report included three patients with uncontrolled IOP that developed reticular corneal changes after initiating natarsidil. In all cases, natarsidil was stopped, followed by a disappearance of the corneal honeycombing. In summary, natarsidil is a safe and effective IOP lowering medication. Rho kinase inhibitors enhance corneal endothelial wound healing and reduce corneal edema. And in apparent contradiction, in patients with existing corneal endothelial dysfunction, the addition of a ROC inhibitor may lead to reticular corneal edema or corneal honeycombing. And finally, discontinuation is associated with resolution of corneal edema. Other educational resources that you can access include keogt.com 
and the YouTube channel and Instagram channel that are linked below. Thank you very much.